My name is Tamer Karatekin, and I am the president of Boston Children's Chess Foundation and Satranj International. I hold master, trainer, and school instructor titles from the World Chess Federation. As an advocate for chess in education, today I want to share many stories with two main highlights, the design journey of an inclusive chess set and the intertwined history of chess and artificial intelligence. I was born in the Macedonian region of Yugoslavia and learned chess from my grandfather playing with this Subotisa model chess set. Growing up in Istanbul, I drew world chess champions Kasparov and Karpo in simultaneous shows and became the Turkish national champion. While studying at MIT, I competed as the first board player on MIT's chess team. Later, as a children's chess coach, I helped my students earn international medals. I also taught at one of the world's first schools to make chess compulsory, witnessing its transformative impact on education. During my classroom instruction there, I developed a chess platform for early childhood education to effectively blend classroom and home learning. Slowly, I became a grant writer and project coordinator for various scholastic chess projects. Currently, I lead the Satranj.ai project to build an artificial intelligence curriculum based on historic board games for youth development. I also create the Satranj art exhibit. Satranj is the ancient name of chess across the Mediterranean and comes from the Indo-European word Chaturanga. I'm a believer in the unifying power of chess and want to share what inspires me about its rich history, especially as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of the World Chess Federation in 2024. Chess education today often emphasizes mechanics, mirroring social media's focus on entertainment and chess platforms emphasis on competition while neglecting the game's rich cultural and intellectual history. For example, chess terminology, such as the shift from chariot to tower, advisor to queen, or chaturanga to ahedres, reflects fascinating phonetic and cultural transformations that few learners are aware of. Moreover, chess has deep connections to art, literature, history, mathematics, and AI that are rarely explored in the classroom. I'm inspired by these stories and intersections that deserve a prominent place in modern education. Today, roughly 25 million children participate yearly in school chess programs, mostly in China and India. Countries like Armenia and Poland mandate chess nationwide. As a low-cost and ideally inclusive activity, chess provides a powerful tool for fostering equity in education. Yet, compared to platforms like Roblox and Minecraft, the educational potential of chess remains underutilized, often seen just as a competitive game rather than a broader tool for learning and social impact. So, is chess a game, a sport, or something more? International Olympic Committee recognizes chess as a mind sport, and in many countries, chess is classified under the sport ministry. The word sport means leisure, coming from Old French and Latin. But does labeling chess as a competitive sport hinder its perception as an educational tool for critical thinking, STEAM, and AI? I am advocating for compulsory chess lessons in pre-K2 to enhance educational outcomes. When a Boston politician asked me about the benefits of chess in education, I turned to the wisdom of Boston's own author and chess master, Benjamin Franklin. In his essay on the morals of chess, Franklin wrote, the game of chess is not merely an ideal amusement. He explained that chess teaches foresight, circumspection, caution, and perseverance, skills that are fundamental for character education. Speaking of Franklin, did you know he shares the same chess fate with Napoleon? Both lost to the Turk, a chess-playing automaton that popularized the idea of mechanical intelligence. Philidor, the strongest player of the era and a renowned opera composer, defeated this mechanical Turk. Benjamin Franklin and Philidor played chess at the Regence Café in Paris. During the 18th to 20th centuries, cafes like this were hubs for intellectuals and artists spreading enlightenment ideas that challenged monarchies and religious authorities. Different cafés featured unique chess sets like this Austrian café set reflecting the romantic era of chess and the arts. This period coincided with European colonialism, influencing the evolution of chess and its rules. For example, white moves first, and the stalemate draw rules were only standardized in the 19th century. Chess was a truly multicultural game in this golden age, but by the end of Age of Enlightenment, it became increasingly religionized, which contrasts with its role as a unifying global sport. 
Chess in school programs and social media have largely ignored this topic, yet it deserves to be addressed for chess to be truly universal and inclusive. So let's address this elephant in the room. Chess might be the most religion-influenced game ever. The cross on the king, the bishop's mitre representing Christian clergy, the crusader knights are deeply embedded in the language and design of chess pieces, mainly in English-speaking traditions. Ironically, in its early days, and unfortunately even to some extent today, chess faced opposition from religious authorities across Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The first chess strategy book, Kitab al even had to include a chapter justifying the game's permissibility in Islam. Again, ironically, half of the modern world chess champions were Jewish, and the earliest chess champions were Muslim. The first major international chess tournament in the U.S., 1904 Cambridge Springs, was organized with chess sets that had no crosses on the kings. As I promote universal chess for the multicultural education, I often explore answers to thought-provoking questions. Can we rethink chess to be spiritually inclusive? In other words, can we roomify chess? And how can we separate church from chess for the multi-faith classroom? Should we modernize chess king and queen to move beyond their entrenched symbols of monarchy and bring back gender-neutral terminology and designs? Can we fully acknowledge the global history of chess as an amalgamation of contributions from cultures worldwide? With these questions in mind, I started a design journey to bring back and strengthen the unifying power of chess. First, I focused on the elephant on the chessboard. How did the elephant disappear from chess? This chess piece, known as the bishop in English, is still called the elephant in most of the major languages of the world, including Spanish, Arabic, Russian, Chinese, Turkish, and Thai. In other languages, it continues to be referred by animal names or military titles. For example, in Middle English, it was once called an archer. Interestingly, the piece was originally named Crocodile, inspired by a marriage gift from Africa to Europe. Another elephant gift, Abu Abbas, was sent by Harun Rashid, the caliph of 1001 Arabic Knights, to the Holy Roman Emperor Charlemagne. And here, you can see the Knight Templars playing chess with abstract elephant chess pieces. Inspired by this rich heritage, I designed a new chess piece named Abu Abbas to honor its multicultural legacy. I am proud to reintroduce the elephant into the world of chess, bridging its historical roots with modern gameplay. I hope children, educators, and professional players will enjoy playing with their elephants. So, how can we talk about cultural, spiritual, and gender inclusivity if we are to promote the chess game in multicultural early childhood and K-12 education? The earliest recognizable chess set, Afrasiab from 750s, Regen's Cafe chess set, Fischer's favorite set, Yugoslavian Dubrovnik, and Latvian chess set featured in the Queen's Gambit finale. And none of these designs included obvious religious symbols, making them culturally and spiritually inclusive. Inspired by these historically inclusive chess sets, I had a eureka moment for a new gender-neutral king shaft design. My goal was to create a piece that is both spiritual and philosophical. The wise ruler lives under a dome, a sacred space that must be protected at all costs to avoid checkmates. My design draws inspirations from iconic domes like the Pantheon in Rome, Hagia Sophia in Istanbul, and MIT's dome in Cambridge. I also incorporated elements from the head wraps of early chess authors like Esuli and Stamma, as well as Etern Monument in Boston Common, which symbolizes the sanctity of scientific advancement. The head wrap design was inspired by the petals of a rose and the olive crowns of the ancient Olympics. The piece as a wall was crafted to embody the form of a rose, symbolizing the fragility and beauty of life, which must be fiercely protected. I named this piece Gülşah, meaning Rose Shah. I'm delighted to share this spiritually inclusive and gender neutral design that embeds many stories. I hope children, educators, and professional players will enjoy playing with it. To complete the chess set, designs for four additional pieces were needed, guided by inclusivity. The Dame, the queen piece in chess, has phonetically evolved from fierce, advisor, which in French sounded like virge, virgin, though many languages still use military or advisory titles. I designed the strongest piece on the board today with a spiral military helmet inspired by both male and female commanders who wore such headpieces. The tall tower shape represents the commanding presence of the minister or vizier. The fierce vizier features a mini onion dome top reminiscent of Austrian cafe chess sets. 
The central section widens slightly at the base, resembling a rope. The entire piece can be held like a pen, symbolizing the statesmanship and military authority of a vizier, while the octagon disc represents the modern movement of this piece. I named this piece Sokol after the prominent Balkan-born Grand Vizier Sokollu. In Slavic languages, Sokol means falcon, a universal symbol of military power. The rook chess piece, also called tower, boat, or cannon, incorporates multiple elements. The wheels of the chariot, the stone bricks of a tower, and the barrel of a cannon, and the anchor of a boat. The anchor was inspired by an Irish friend and Boston's Navy heritage. I named this piece Shahruh, Shah of the Rooks, just like the commander and chess master Timur named his son. Next, we have the most famous horse in history, Bukefal, the legendary horse of Alexander the Great. As someone born in Macedonia, I have to give my mark to the set. Bukefal journeyed from the Balkans to South Asia and died near the birthplace of chess. Finally, we have the pound. The most famous saying on pounds comes from Andre Philidor, pounds are the soul of chess. Inspired by this, I named the pounds of the Shahi set Regence Philidor, honoring both the historical Regence Cafe and Philidor's legacy. Here is the Shahi entire set with the corresponding chess piece icons. Shah is the name for chess in many Slavic languages. German Shah, French Eshek, and English chess have also phonetically evolved from the Shah word. Shahi means royal as an adjective. As a name, it was given to one of the largest cannons ever built to destroy castle walls. Several centuries later, after sinking some British ships, it was given as a gift to Queen Victoria. Shahi symbolizes the evolution of chess through the chariot to the tower, to the cannon, and to the boat. I am very excited and proud of this chess set design as it helps chess educators and parents teach children about chess's rich, multilingual, and inclusive cultural history. Beyond addressing the inclusivity problem, fully integrating chess into education also requires recognizing its profound intellectual value. Earlier this year, Kasparov gave a talk at the Northeastern University in Boston. He joked about being the first knowledge worker replaced by AI, mentioning that after losing to Deep Blue, he began working at the Deep Blue restaurants. He stated that chess has served as a crucial tool for understanding and bridging the gap between how humans and machines think, learn, and solve problems. For example, we have ancient chess puzzles that sparked human curiosity over centuries and were the testbed for artificial intelligence. Wheat and the chessboard, horse tour, ah diamond problem, Dilara mate. Then we have Sully's diamond puzzle that was so hard to crack that it remained unsolved for over 1,000 years. A complete solution was first demonstrated by endgame expert Yuri Averbach. Yuri lived until age 102, my personal hero. The puzzle can be solved with dynamic programming techniques. So the history of chess and artificial intelligence was very intertwined. Shannon from MIT formulated chess as a computational problem. Turing developed one of the earliest chess algorithms. MacHack, the first computer program to play in human conditions, was developed here in Boston. Kasparov Deep Blue Match showed computers could outperform humans in complex tasks. One of the most controversial and strongest chess engines, Ripka, meaning fish, was written by an MIT alum. Today, open source projects like Stockfish and groundbreaking advancements like AlphaZero highlight the transformative power of machine learning. AlphaZero inspired AlphaFold, which won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2024. You should also know that Boston has a world chess champion, Larry Kaufman. Larry Kaufman became a world seniors chess champion in 2008. He's an MIT Sloan alum and was a longtime contributor to computer chess. I should add here that I was coached by another world senior chess champion, Evgeny Vasikov. Building on the shared history of chess and artificial intelligence, I lead the Satranj AI curriculum project, which focuses on teaching AI algorithms through chess. Most famous of these are Minimax, Alpha Beta Pruning, Monte Carlo Tree Search, and Reinforcement Learning. This TEDx Boston talk would be incomplete without mentioning the Harvard Square chess community. I'm only able to mention a few players here, Former Harvard chess team captain, international master Mark Esserman defeated the current world chess champion, Grandmaster Gukesh, in a spectacular tournament match reminiscent of the romantic era of chess. The strongest player at Harvard Square, Billy Collins, is still an active Bliss player at age 70. 
FIDE master William Kelleher served as a vice president at World Chess Federation many years. So chess is more than a game, but also more than a sport. It's a bridge between cultures and an inclusive tool for character, STEAM, and AI education. Collaborate with us in building a new future for chess education and cultural connection. Teach at your institution with our nonprofit Satrange.ai and Deep Sea Chess Curricula. Join our AI coding boot camps and explore how chess can inspire AI education. Use culturally and spiritually inclusive chess sets in the classroom, at tournaments, and at home, such as the Shahi chess set designed to celebrate the cultural heritage and evolution of chess. I am Tamer Karitekin, president of Boston Children's Chess Foundation and Satrange International. Thank you for listening. <laughs>